Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty awesome little HP Ultrabook powered by the Ryzen 7 5800U. 8 cores, 16 threads, and a boost clock up to 4.4 GHz, and usually I don't look at Ultrabooks on my channel, just really given the price and everything like that. But I knew I had to get my hands on this once I found out it was powered by that 5000 series Ryzen APU. So I've had this in my possession for the past four days, and this has really been my go-to laptop. Every time I need to look something up, I go ahead and grab this. I love the form factor. It's super lightweight, and we have a beautiful 1080p, 13.3-inch IPS display. And that Ryzen 7 5800U can power through basically anything that I need to do on this thing. Now, I will tell you that I don't own this laptop. This is just a review unit that was loaned to me by Micro Center. But I'm really thinking about picking something up just like this or very, very close to it. Now before we take a look at the specs and test this thing out, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Micro Center. Now if you're not familiar with Micro Center and you are a tech enthusiast, then you really should be. They have real brick and mortar stores that you can walk into and put your hands on the product before you buy it. And if you head over to their website right now, they have a new section called the Platinum Collection. This is where they have all of their high quality name brand gaming laptops and desktops. There's a lot of great stuff to choose from in here, and I've done a few reviews on different desktops and laptops from their Platinum Collection, but I really wanted to get my hands on this HP with the 5800U, so they were kind enough to send it over. If you're interested in checking out what they have to offer in the Platinum Collection, I will leave a link in the description. So when it comes to this HP Pavilion Aero, we have that Ryzen 7 5800U, 8 cores, 16 threads with a base clock of 1.9 GHz and a boost up to 4.4. As for the GPU, we have that built-in Radeon 8 up to 2000 MHz, 16 GB of DDR4 running at 3200 MHz, a 1TB NVMe SSD, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2, 13.3-inch 1920x1200 IPS anti-glare display. When it comes to the battery, this is rocking a 43-watt-hour battery, and they claim up to 10 hours of video playback on this thing, and that's probably at around 40% brightness on the screen. And this comes right out of the box with Windows 11 pre-installed. Since this is an Ultrabook, we are a little limited on I.O. here, but they did give us that full-size HDMI port. We have a single USB 3.1 port over here on the left-hand side, USB Type-C, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. Moving over to the right-hand side, power input, and another USB 3.1 port. It's got a single zone white LED backlit keyboard, which I think works out really well along with this big trackpad compared to the size of the laptop itself. Remember, this is a 13.3 inch Ultrabook. Now it's time to dive into the operating system and see how this performs as an everyday laptop. Then we'll run some benchmarks and test some PC games on this thing. So before I jump into testing with these APUs, there's two things I always like to look out for. The GPU clock speed, make sure that we're running at 2000 megahertz, which it should be on this 5800U with that Radeon 8, and CPU or APU wattage. A lot of the times the manufacturer will lower the wattage on these APUs, which will reduce performance, but it helps out with heat and battery life. I want to see what this is running at. Hopefully we can get around 30 to 35 watts with this, but uh, right here I will have the wattage listed. First things first, let's check out this GPU. If we go to graphics, you can see that our core clock is at 400 megahertz right now. If I start a render test, 2000. So they haven't dumbed down the clock on the Radeon 8, and that's a good thing. 2000 megahertz is what we should be at. Next thing I wanted to do is just check the TDP on the CPU or the CPU package power. It's listed right here. And I'm going to start a Prime95 test. This will give us a good idea of what this is set at out of the box. And as you can see, this does jump up to 30 watts, so we should get some pretty decent performance out of this versus a 15 watt version, which I have tested in the past. It didn't turn out to be a really good setup just because of that lower wattage. But with this one, we are at 30, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So obviously, if you're looking into buying a laptop like this, you're not going for the gaming side of things, but we will be testing out some gaming. As for using this thing as your everyday desktop, I haven't run into any issues. I've been using it for the past four days. Everything's been super snappy with that 5800U. And coming out of the box with Windows 11 is a big plus or a big downside. It really depends on how you look at everything. Now, personally, on my own laptop, I've been using Windows 11 for the past two months. And it was a relatively painless swap from Windows 10 to Windows 11. But there are a few little things like the context menus and things like that that still annoy me with Windows 11. When it comes down to it, I just really got to get used to it because I've been using Windows 10 for so long. But using something like this for web browsing is going to work out just fine. We have that Wi-Fi 6 built in. 
Unfortunately, there's no Ethernet on the side, but this does have some really good Wi-Fi built in. And uh, like I said, I really haven't run into any issues at all with this little thing. Checking out some 4K video playback with that 5800U paired up with that Radeon 8. We're not going to have any issues with 4K playback on that Wi-Fi 6. So we'll go with Stats for Nerds. Give it a second to buffer in. And if you take a look in the top left-hand corner, we have Stats for Nerds running. Just one drop frame, 4K, and it'll run through this all day long. We definitely have enough power for 4K 60fps playback out of this 5800U. I also ran a few benchmarks on this Ultrabook. First up, Geekbench 5 with a single core score of 1386. Looking really good on that single core, especially for a little mobile chip. And multi-core really isn't that bad either. We're at 5043, but I could see this getting a bit more if we could up that wattage a little over 30 watts. Next thing I ran was 3D Mark, and first up, Night Raid with a 14,117. And Firestrike came in with a 3,303. You really can't compare this to a gaming laptop or a desktop with a dedicated GPU, but when comparing this to other Ultrabooks with integrated graphics, these scores aren't bad at all. But these are benchmarks, and now I want to see if this little thing can really game. So let's go ahead and test out some PC games. So first up, we have Fortnite, 1080p medium settings, but we're in performance mode. And when it comes to these integrated graphics, performance mode is definitely where you want to be. By the end of this run here, I had an average of 82 FPS, and at 1080p medium settings, I'd say this is fully playable on this little laptop. It's looking pretty good. Street Fighter V is one of these games I always like to test on these APUs, and with this one here, we can do 900p medium settings, or you can go 1080p low. Personally, I prefer those shadows and texture details to be at least medium, so I drop it down to 900p, and it's going to run at 60 just fine. Got some OG Skyrim, still an amazing game, 1080p, medium settings. To tell you the truth, I probably could have got away with high 1080p with this one. Checking out some GTA 5, and on these 5000 series mobile APUs, I've not had really good luck at higher resolutions over 900p. But with this setup at 900p with a high normal mix, you can get an average of around 58. Or if you go all the way down to normal, you can get an average of around 64 with this one. So I'm really impressed by this game here. I've been testing it out on a lot of different stuff. This is Back for Blood. We're at 900p medium settings, fully playable here. I got an average of 87 FPS and at medium settings, we could probably go to 1080p with it, especially with the AMD FSR set to performance. I mean, this just works really well on these APUs. And the final game I tested here was Doom Eternal. This is just one of those games that tears into these APUs. We're at 720p, low settings. We only got an average of 51 FPS. If we drop that resolution scale down a little bit, there's a chance we could get an average of around 60, but I left it at 100% for this test. I gotta say, I'm actually really impressed by this little Ultrabook. The keyboard on this has a lot of throw to it. It feels really good. We got a decently sized trackpad given the size of the laptop, and this thing is super thin. As you can see, even the USB ports have this little half hatch on them because it's so thin right there. But yeah, I mean, overall, this has been a great little setup. I do wish they would have added Ethernet. Now you can always use a USB or a USB Type-C Ethernet adapter, but to have Gigabit or 2.5 from the factory would have been a big plus. I'm glad they kept that full-size HDMI port over on the side because even though I would use this as something like a carry-along, I still want to connect to a bigger monitor when the time comes, and I don't want to have to carry around 150 different dongles. For this thing being so thin and small, it's definitely packing a lot of power with that 5800U, and initially I was worried about those CPU temps, but with the average that it came up with while doing all of my testing, at idle, 40 degrees, average gaming was only 78 degrees Celsius, 
And the maximum I got this to hit was 98, which was thermal throttle, but that was in a Cinebench R23 test. It was about five minutes into the test. And you know, I kind of expected this to happen on such a thin little setup with eight cores and 16 threads maxed out. And the fan on this thing doesn't get loud at all. You really do have to kind of listen for it. I kind of wish it put out more air. I wouldn't mind a little more noise out of that built-in fan for a little more cooling, especially while running those CPU intensive tasks for much longer. But yeah, I personally think this is a great little ultra book. And if you're interested in learning more about this, I will leave a couple links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. And I do want to give Micro Center a big shout out for let me review this one. If you're interested in getting a free 240 gigabyte SSD, Micro Center has a new customer exclusive deal going on right now. Link for this is in the description. You're going to put in your name and email and they'll send you a coupon to go in store to get a free 240 gigabyte SSD. Link to this exclusive Micro Center deal is in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this, be it more PC games, some video editing, or even some emulation, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.